As you can see on the screen here today, uh, we're going to be going over what's new in Vaults 2019. I have Irvin Hayes Jr. here from Autodesk. Uh, Irvin, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. How are you? Awesome. I'm, I'm doing super well. I'm really excited to see what's new in Vault 2019. I mean, I've seen some of it already. Uh, super exciting stuff. But uh, with that, thanks all for being here today. Let's go ahead and get started. Irvin, I will uh, pass the floor over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Nigel. I really appreciate it. And uh, welcome everyone uh, on the phone and, and connected here. Uh, we are going to, as Nigel said, talk about what's new for Vault 2019. Uh, I'll take some breaks in between some of the larger sections and, and we'll do some uh, Q&A. So with that, our agenda here for today is we're going to talk about, we're going to do a little introduction into Vault 2019. We're going to talk about some streamlined external collaboration, some productivity improvements, and enhanced administrative experiences that we put into the product. So as with every year, Vault 2019 and all of our other previous releases, we do try and focus on a lot of the customer requested enhancements. We've been doing a lot of these enhancements in between releases. If you're on the 2018 release of Vault, um, we, you've noticed that some of the dot releases, the dot one and dot two releases have come out with new enhancements uh, to the product. And those enhancements also included some requested enhancements by you, the user, who put them on our, on our idea station. <clears throat> so with that uh, 2019, the larger enhancements have been included, not only the ones that are coming from you, the customers, but you know things that uh, are needed to continue to uh, make the product more streamlined and works well with any of the other um, additional CAD products that not only Autodesk creates, but some of our third parties uh, CAD products that we integrate with. So. Let's go into to a lot of these things here. So again, as we talked about the streamlined external collaboration, you know, the whole point of this area is to easily connect and exchange your data um, with customers, manufacturers, suppliers, or even design collaboration uh, or collab contractors, excuse me, uh, basically external people to your company. Our productivity improvements for 2019 uh, again, is to step forward with with you know improvements that the CAD users um, have requested, such as checking out files within Inventor Bomb dialog, as well as some of the other uh, enhancements, which we will go deeper into uh, in some future slides. We've enhanced some administrative experiences. Uh, we'll talk about custom roles and what that means, and even a change in auto loader, uh, and, and what that means to who can actually use auto loader. So let's jump right into the streamlined external collaboration. So there are three new capabilities here that have come uh, not only in the 2018 dot, dot releases, but we've also included a new one in the 2019 release. The first one is about sharing and collaborating on vi visualization representations um, and a shared views capability. You know, this is related to reviewing a, a process of design files uh, with external collaborators like customers, manufacturing suppliers, um, and or partners that you might be working with. The second capability uh, is about a one-time manual share of 2D or 3D design data deliverables um, with customers and suppliers using Autodesk Drive, uh, and you can put those into some of the cloud platforms, uh, basically just getting all the information out of Vault and then sending it on to the third party. The third capability is a bi-directional triggered design data exchange to support external design collaborations with manufacturing suppliers and external consultants. Uh, this is new to 2019 and, and we'll show a, a, a video demonstration of what this is and I'll discuss this a lot more as well. So let's jump into this first one. Uh, this first update actually came in 2018.1. Uh, this is the shared views and basically this particular feature is talking about sharing a viewable with you know, ex an external collaborator to your company and not uh, sharing the actual IP or the design file itself. So for, for example, if you wanted to take a, a particular design and you wanted to have your customer you know, request approval or have approval for what, what you're doing with that design, but you didn't want to share the original, let's say, inventor uh, assembly, uh, and and send it out, you know, via email or and wait for the customer to open it up, et cetera, et cetera. 
You do this by actually going into Vault, you select the assembly, and then you select the shared view on that assembly, and it creates a viewable that gets sent out to uh, a particular website called shares.autodesk.com or viewer.autodesk.com, and the customer sees a view of uh, a visualization of that assembly or that part. When they see that visualization, they have the ability to comment on it. Uh, they can mark it up. They can also explode the view so that they can see exactly how the assembly was put together. They can see individual components uh, and, and basically see great detail in a viewable through a web browser versus worrying about them actually having the full CAD product open and having all of the, the entire assembly and its components uh, deliver it to them directly. When you get this review or receive the review, review and comments back, not only you can see these things directly in Vault, uh, you can also reply to them directly in Vault using a third pane, um, and then you can continue to work on that as you get more responses to the viewable that you have shared with that external person. So again, this was available in 2018.1. It, it's still available in 2019. But with 2019, we did create some improvements to it based off of our first implementation. So what we've done here is we've also given you some more capabilities of how you publish the uh, inventor IPTs or IAMs um, by not showing or, or hiding like the part properties and the component names, um, similar to what you'll be able to do in inventor, which will be covered uh, in a different what's new conversation. And then you can copy that link um, in, in when you copy that link option, it's now including an upload complete dialogue in case you need to copy it again. So um, those are enhancements that were asked after we released it in 2018.1. So move over to the second one that we talked about, which is des delivering the design files themselves. So one of the common challenges regarding external collaboration uh, with 2D and 3D design data with customers and suppliers is how do you handle the CAD references properly? How do you make sure that when you want to share your assembly, you've gathered all of the um, parts and, and sub-assemblies that, that are referenced with that top-level assembly and, and make sure you have a complete package? So Autodesk Vault now, combined with the Autodesk Drive capabilities, helps address this particular challenge. And it does this by using uh, our, our current pack and go functionality within Vault. So you select an assembly. <clears throat> Actually, let's go through this real quick. I'll, I'll show you in a, in, a different, in a different slide here. So as the project manager goes through, you end up setting up a project, say for instance, in Autodesk Drive or in Fusion Team. Once you have that location set up and you have installed the desktop uh, connector, then you'd also have to go to the assembly inside of Vault. This is the second part where you select the assembly. Uh, Vault will automatically collect all of the referenced components when you do a pack and go on that assembly. And then in the drop down here, as you can see in the, in the second image, you will select either Drive or Fusion 360 as your location of where you want to put the files. Once you hit OK and you've placed all those files up there, <clears throat> you can have access to these design files or your third party has access to all of the design files using a web browser and going to the drive location that you've shared or the Fusion Team location. Up in those locations, you will have a view of the assembly. You will see all of the used subcomponents in that. These are the original IPTs uh, or, or parent files. And then they can also at that point um, do what they need to do with those, whether it be viewing them, they can modify them, uh, or, or, or just hold on to them. Again, it depends on what you're doing with that third party and how you're sharing those particular design files. This is not an automatic synchronization back to Vault, so this is a one-way push, uh, and, and therefore um, <clears throat> you can always push again if you have newer file versions and update the ones that are in the drive or in the Fusion, 3, Fusion Team uh, location. Now, what if you wanted to collaborate automatically outside uh, with an external collaborator? And, and this is more of, of designing in collaboration versus just getting responses and sending a one-way push. So with that, 
<clears throat> collaboration on designs, we had a couple of challenges that we wanted to address. Um, and these are challenges that came directly from uh, a lot of our customers and users. And, and one of them is this one, as you see quoted, need an easy and easy and triggered way for design engineers to share project related up to date release design files with outside suppliers or customers for consumption. Another, we would like to outsource some CAD files and their references to another company so they can clean up the assemblies and create drawings and get them back in the vault without loss of the CAD references. And the last, we would like to uh, contract external firms with design tasks for subassemblies due to time constraints, leveraging available up-to-date templates and standard components managed in vault in a cost-effective way. So how did we do that? <clears throat> we enhanced a, a project sync capability. Um, if you're familiar with Vault and you're, you are familiar with Vault's capability of using project sync with Buzzsaw, we have taken that project sync capability and transferred it over to using Fusion Team as its location. You know, a lot of customers today, when they're trying to do this type of collaboration, they're using Dropbox, they're using OneDrive or Box. Um, to transfer files back and forth. It could be even using FTP sites, Google Docs, and I can go on and on. But the challenges with using those, those uh, particular applications is that the, you have a, a chance of loss of connectivity between uh, files that are referencing each other, and you, you're not sure you've gathered all the correct information. So a lot of issues could, could, be, could ca be caused by these third parties that really don't understand CAD files and CAD relationships. But by leveraging Vault Professional and Fusion Teams, you know, customers will be able to share these design files with an authorized external collaborator, uh, so just you know, customers and suppliers and third parties. And then you can increase the, the satisfaction and transparency of decreasing loss from miscommunications or missing files. All you need to do is configure the data uh, to be synchronized and let the vault take care of keeping all the stakeholders up to date and collaborate on the latest versions. So let me show you a video of how, how this is actually done inside of Vault 2019. And I'll try and pause this in a couple of sections here. So the first thing you'll notice is that you'll have to go in, you're creating, um, there's a new tab called Collaborate. You'll create a sync uh, option, and then you'll create a definition for the cloud mapping <clears throat> that you're trying to configure uh, with the external source. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select a particular folder. This one just so happens to select the, the dollar sign. And then the next thing is, is where is the drive, cloud drive location? And I'm using a Fusion 360 site as an example. Excuse me, let me make sure I can see what's going on. There we go. So I've chosen, I've already got, um, Autodesk desktop connector installed. I've got it configured with my Fusion location, and I'm selecting now a Fusion location to uh, map my Vault location to. So, so I select that, and you'll see a mapping occurs, but it is also what you can see here is the general tab now lights up with the selected folder uh, that I'm going to be pushing to this Fusion location. I have a few actions that I can do here. I can upload this particular folder directly to the cloud only, I can download from this cloud drive location, or I can do a bi-directional sync. Um, each of these have their own unique um, <clears throat> uses or use cases. So for instance, if you're just collaborating with an external party, but you only want to push things to them, you use the upload. If you had a specific folder mapping where um, that folder is where the external party is always doing the modifications and you want to download from that, that location only, um, so you can have multiple folder synchronization set up here, and each one can have its own particular action configured. And then obviously you have the bi-directional uh, synchronization, and then you, you'd be bi-directionally syncing that particular folder all the time. That takes a little bit more care um, into to what's going on, so you do have to be careful what you do there. So once that's done, uh, you can go into the scheduling. Well, how do I want to, uh, how frequently do I want to synchronize this particular folder with the drive location. In this case, we, have, we can do a daily sync, we can do a sync on every hour, or I can say none, which there are, there's another method to synchronizing on a particular, on a manual state with that particular folder. So in this case, I'm gonna synchronize every eight hours, 
And now I can do a conditional sync. Let me keep this one going for a moment. What if I only want to synchronize this particular folder and only push up um, files that are in the release state? So now I can actually filter what I'm synchronizing. I can filter based on file property values. I can, I can also synchronize by um, only uploading files with a particular extension. So if I only want to share uh, PDFs for, for an example, I can, I can just push the PDFs of the release date uh, of a particular drawing. And, and that's all I'll share with the external source. So we do give a lot of uh, options here uh, on, on synchronization. And then you get a preview of what you're gonna actually synchronize based on that criteria. So here's a, just an example of what ends up happening here. <clears throat> we're looking at it a full assembly, looking at those that are in a work in progress. We're gonna change those to release because that's how we set our synchronization settings. Uh, once those things are released, what ends up happening is in the background, the synchronization will then push those files up to Fusion Team location that we synchronized to. And then this is an example of what you'll see. You'll see the top level assembly along with a uses tab in here and all of the components that, that assembly uses. The, the use in is, is this, uh, it's similar to the where use tab that you see in vault uh, and then some associated drawings in that drawings tab or option. So at that point, you know, you can go in there. You, you, in order to, to actually download and use this information or use the synchronization capabilities, you need this desktop connector. Um, as you can see here, let me scoot back a little bit. This is on the right-hand side. When you're in Fusion 360, you do have an option to hit the desktop connector for Fusion. You download that, install it, you log in with your Autodesk ID, and then what you'll see is if you're familiar with uh, Dropbox and OneDrive, you'll see a, a uh, virtual drive on, in your Windows Explorer that shows you the contents of the cloud location. So that's how you get the desktop connector. Um, here, what you're seeing also is that if you were using Inventor and, and you're on the other end, um, you can actually open directly from that desktop connector, um, modify the assemblies or files um, that are in that Fusion Team drive, virtual drive, and work on them. And again, because it's synchronized, it'll end up pushing the changes back up to the Fusion 360 location, keeping all the references uh, together as well. Let's do a quick recap here on the collaboration in the project sync. Again, it's a bi-directional exchange of CAD documents. Um, it's secure, it's transparent. Um, so users who are in Vault or in Inventor on a daily basis and they're checking in and out of Vault, they don't have to worry about the synchronization happening um, because it's happening automatic in the background on a, on a different machine where um, all the synchronization in the desktop connector is configured properly for the synchronization. CAD awareness and the folder links are supported um, and, and then you share selective data with external collaborators. Again, that's the whole point of this particular connectivity. And then Project Sync creates jobs and adds these to the job queue. So it does require the job processor to be configured so that the uh, information is traveling back and forth, not only between Fusion 360, um, not only to Fusion 360, but back from Fusion 360 and into Vault. So therefore you're collaborating uh, real time uh, as quickly as the, the synchronization happens, um, but getting information back and forth in a manner in which uh, it respects the relationships between the products. So I think this is a really good time before I jump into the next session um, for uh, a couple of chat uh, questions. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, uh, you know, we've kind of gone through this collaboration piece. I know this is a big one. Um, before we move on to the next section, let's go ahead and answer a couple of questions. Um, before we uh, we move on, so let me go ahead and find some. Um, in regards to all of the three functionalities you showed, um, shared views, um, as well as some of this project sync stuff, what is available to people on Vault Basic, Vault Workgroup, and Vault Pro? Um, very good question. Um, so ne uh, none of these three oh. things are available in Vault Basic. Um, as far as the rest, uh, the, the other three activities uh, that we've shown here, Project Sync is available in Vault Professional. The other two, the shared views and the uh, pushing out of the files using um, Pack and Go is available in Workgroup and Professional. 
Cool. So hopefully that clears that up for a couple of people through here. When you're doing things like shared um, shared views, um, or sorry, sharing the design data within the project sync functionality, uh, does it carry over the things like external references or things like DWG underlays? Um, pretty much all children of, say, an assembly file or a drawing file? Yes, it will. It does. Keep you know it's very important even in Vault that we keep um, uh, that Vault has the knowledge of the referenced components. So this will keep those references intact. Um, when you do a pack and go, um, it will take uh, automatically the reference children. So if you see it in the users tab, it's going to take it along with it. Um, how it takes it along with it in pack and go is how you how you um, set up the pack and go selection. Because uh, you could be not excluding, you could exclude drawings, you could ex exclude attachments in those cases, or you could be only packing going with files, as an example. As far as the uh, project sync, uh, it will take all the references because if we don't, uh, you will break, uh, for instance, the assembly because it's going to try and open something where it can't find a, a subcomponent. So all references are, are carried along with it. Right. Even if those references exist outside of the shared folder, Irvin? Um, they have to exist within the workspace. These are still the rules of Vault, uh, regardless of Project Sync. So as, as long as you, when you check in in the Vault, uh, you have to check in all the references along with it. Uh, so there is a, a, a folder within Vault that has that referenced file or component, and then it uses that folder setup uh, to synchronize it outside. Cool. Awesome. Uh, hopefully that, uh, that answers a couple of questions for people. Um, and then just another thing. For clarification, Irvin, um, with the project sync, it uses Fusion Team, not Fusion 360, to be able to sync the files um, to the cloud. Um, so it actually uses the desktop connector, <clears throat> and the desktop connector will will synchronize with uh, either Autodesk Drive or Fusion Team. Uh, yeah, I think in the in the video it probably said uh, Fusion 360. I think the names are changing a lot up there, so it, it'll be Fusion Team. Yeah, if you have any questions on, um, anyone has any further questions on uh, how to complete any of this, I've done a little bit of research on how um, this whole Project Sync functionality does work. Um, just let me know. Uh, if I need any help, I'll definitely reach out to Irvin for some help with that as well. Um, we'll answer one more question before we move on to the next section. All right. And then I know there are a couple more. We'll get to those pretty shortly here. Um, if you change the state of a file from WIP to released, um, will the file not be uploaded anymore or synced anymore if you uh, set the, the criteria to property equals released? So if you, if you set the, pro the, the filter to upload only released files, it will, it will upload the released version um, when you flip that particular version into, uh, or that file into work in progress to make the next version, um, it will not resync that file until you put it back into released, and then it will sync the latest released version. Okay, so while it's in WIP, it'll keep the old released version up in Fusion Team. That is correct. Okay, cool. That helps. Thank you for answering that question. All right, so let's go ahead and get moving. Um, I know we have a lot more questions, but I want to move uh, a little bit further uh, down the line. So let's do that. Absolutely. All right. So let's jump into some productivity improvements of what we've done here. <clears throat> so again, uh, a lot of, uh, if, if you look into our idea station or our ideas forum online, a lot of you, the users have placed ideas up there uh, for us to, to try and implement. Um, I will mention that it is not easy to implement the quantity of ideas that we have up there. We have well over 2,000 ideas. Um, they're great ideas. Uh, um, we do try and give some immediate feedback. You'll see myself and a couple of my other uh, co-product owners will review those ideas uh, on a daily basis. We may ask you questions uh, and, and you know, get more clarity on what you're trying to uh, ask us to do. But some of those ideas may not fall in line with where we're taking the product. Um, and then other ideas are, are harder to implement. But we try and do our best to implement as many as possible, um, not only at the major release of this 2019, as an example, but our dot releases that we've um, put out in between. So 
continue to look, uh, first off, continue to post uh, your ideas, continue to make sure you vote on other uh, ideas that are up there that you agree with. Um, make sure you offer up as much clarity on the idea and what problem we want to solve. Uh, and we will try and get back to you as soon as possible on um, where we might want to proceed with that idea. So here are some ideas that we've done that were asked for. Um, check out command with the Inventor Bomb uh, within the Inventor Bomb editor. So a lot of users will be inside of Inventor. You're, you have an assembly and all of its components open. You're in the Bomb editor. You're making some changes. And when you want to make a change in the Bomb editor, um, you can't because you have to get out of the Bomb editor to check out the the component and then uh, go back into the Bomb editor. So uh, someone's asked, well, why can't I just check it out while I'm in there. That way I can complete what I need to do in the bomb editor. Uh, and then I can check it back in when I'm done in the bomb editor. So what we've done is in a right click menu inside the bomb editor, as you can see in the upper right hand uh, corner image, you can right click on uh, multiple files, uh, select vault and then select checkout. And you can check out right from the bomb editor. <clears throat> the next one is ignoring obsolete state. Uh, so if your security still allows you to see files that are in the obsolete state, but you're inside of AutoCAD or you're inside of Inventor and you're placing a component from Vault, there's a new uh, option within the uh, Select from Vault dialog that says ignore obsolete state. So any files that are in the obsolete state will then be filtered out of the list so you don't see those files and you can select files that are you know, in, in any state other than obsolete. The next one is sending a folder link um, to a shared folder content um, to share a folder content. So right now, if you if you select a file inside of Vault, you're looking at 2018 or earlier, uh, we have the ability that when you select a specific file, you can send the link to the file itself. But we never had the option to send a link to a folder. Mm -hmm. So we've added that option now that when you select a specific folder and you say send link, we will send a link directly to that folder. Uh, or put that link in the email uh, um, outbox, <clears throat> uh, in the email uh, contents, so that you can send a link to the folder. Another one is recognizing out-of-date uh, Vault bomb data. So uh, as you know, every time you check in a file, if it's, a, if it's assigned to an item, currently there's no way of knowing that uh, that item needs to be updated because the version of the file has changed, uh, and therefore the uh, item is out-of-date. So we've added a column for status uh, of the item in the item master. You'll see a couple of new, two, two new um, uh, icons that are there. One is a current, meaning that the item is currently up to date. Uh, and the second is a, an icon that's telling you that it's out of date. And if there is nothing, there's just probably an item with no file. So uh, there's no status for the files that are in there. So you can search on this property um, and then you can select, if, if you filter on that particular property, you can select all the items at that time and select uh, update item, which will then bring that item up to date with the current versions of the files associated to the item. So it's an easy way of seeing which items are out of date. <clears throat> now I know we've got a, um, at least a few, according to the poll earlier, uh, a lot actually, I'm sorry, of Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional users, but if some of you are using the Thin Client, um, we've at, we've been asked to add a, a really simple filter to the Thin Client that wasn't there before, which is showing the latest version only of files. We've always had the option to show only the latest version of an item, but we'd always show all released um, versions of a file if you say uh, only re show released versions of files. So we've added this checkbox. You see it under History where you check the box that says show only the latest version. You can see in the images the differences that it actually makes when you select this checkbox. Now the user can only see the latest released revision uh, of a file uh, based on, on this checkbox being selected in the thin client. We have had some, some improvements in the 2018 updates, and I think um, for those of you who are not on 2018 and probably earlier, um, you haven't seen these updates, so it's important to tell you what these updates are. Um, we have changed some, uh, we have changed the job processor now to instead of using Inventor and then also consuming an Inventor license, we've changed it to use the Inventor server. 
Inventor Server is a headless version of Inventor. It has all the same commands um, that we need to uh, do any of the jobs that the Vault does, such as creating Dwift files, updating properties, et cetera. Um, but it doesn't require an Inventor license. It also actually increases the speed in which the jobs are being processed now. So uh, not only you don't require an Inventor license anymore, but the jobs are processed faster uh, using Inventor Server. We made some changes to the job queue as well. Uh, the job queue is now uh, a modeless dialog. It also has the ability for you to add file properties. Um, so if you're an administrator and you're monitoring the job queue for the jobs that are in there, if you see some jobs that uh, you don't understand what the job is for, you can actually modify the grid, add some file properties to the grid so that you understand what that particular job was being used on, like the parent file. Also, you can right click on that file uh, that, or that job and select go to folder and it'll actually take you right to the file inside of vault so that you can see which file is related to that job. And if it's a failure, you can either fix the file or you can resubmit the job or at least understand uh, which file is, is causing the issue. Um, we've added support, uh, any cat support for Solid Edge. Uh, Inventor did a release uh, to, to add Solid Edge support in Inventor 2018.1. We followed up with a, a release of, of Vault 2018.1, um, and we've added that Solid Edge support so that we understand that when Inventor uses AnyCAD to add a Solid Edge component to its assembly, when it checks it in the Vault, we will understand uh, the Solid Edge parts and their references to each other, and we will check them in with that reference information. And then the last uh, that we show here on this particular page is the uh, ability to show only a date uh, without the time in the AutoCAD title block. Uh, this is in 2019. This is uh, some, some of our users who use uh, SolidWorks and some other third-party CAD products have asked us to uh, enhance our uh, ability or our, our prevention of checking in design data files straight through the Vault client. So we've enhanced that list. We've increased the, the what Vault considers as a design data file um, and restricted more file extensions such as ProE, Creo, um, MicroStation, and, and SolidWorks file extensions. Um, and so therefore, when this option is checked, those particular file extensions will not be allowed to be checked in directly through Vault. Other enhancements in there is the lifecycle transition and using the Boolean uh, and or or not operators. So now when you're in a, a transition and you want a transition criteria, you can use these Boolean operators on a particular property uh, so that you have a couple of options, such as we're showing here is the file name contains C3 but not D3. You can go ahead and transition or the author contains Mike or Dan, then you can also uh, continue on with this transition. We've also added this particular capability of using these Boolean operators to the automatic assignment of the categories to a particular file. Um, we're showing you an example of the engineering or um, category or the manufacturing um, category. Uh, we've added this so that you can, you can choose whether or not you want a particular file on creation inside a vault to be assigned to a particular category based on this Boolean criteria. For those who use DWG files uh, and use different authoring tools that use that creates DWG files, we've added a new DWG type so that you understand who is or what application parented that particular DWG file. So you can see here we have DWG type as a property. It can show you that it's an AutoCAD file, uh, AutoCAD M, AutoCAD Electrical, or Inventor. Um, I think we have some other ones for Civil 3D uh, as well. Um, so we've just added this as an additional uh, type so that you understand who or what product created the DWG originally. Uh, Nigel, do you want to stop here and take a few more questions or do you want to go on to the end? Yeah, let's take a few more so that we don't take like 50 at the end. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just a quick question from him. Uh, are there any new Vault or Inventor I properties available as columns in the Vault Explorer within the properties pane? 
Uh, hi, Radu. Radu. Uh, I, I know Radu. Um, uh, the answer to that is no. There are no, there are no new properties uh, introduced in any of the products uh, at this point. Doesn't mean you can't map custom ones. So um, that's, yeah, a, that's another thing. I know Radu probably knows exactly how to do that. So um, yeah, just I, I looked at IPTs um, while, while that question came in. I haven't looked at IDWs yet, but I guess uh, Irvin answered that question faster than I could look. So that's, that's one. Um, in regards to the, it looks like a lot of these questions are for uh, the bi-directional syncing and the Fusion Team syncing for, for Project Sync. Um, is there uh, is there item support for that, or is it only for um, files and folders? Uh, these are only for files and folders. Uh, cool. Fusion 360, they're, they're, with items, there are no physical files, so we're only synchronizing physical files, not, not metadata. Makes sense. And then another thing in regards to the project sync, um, is there a utility for checkout functionality, or is it kind of a, when you're doing a bi-directional sync, you don't know um, if someone outside is making a change, do you, like, is there a way to prevent anyone else from, say, checking that file out within the vault? So that one's a good question. That one's been asked uh, quite a quite a few times in different uh, environments that I've been in. The key here is, uh, I would say, one of the best practices you might want to do is that when you know a file is being edited externally, you probably want to put that into a state where uh, no one internally can modify um, the file except for uh, the user that's running the job processor or, or doing the jobs. Um, that way you don't uh, accidentally overwrite a file internally when someone else is messing with it externally as well. Because you can then overwrite the file uh, and then also um, lose the change that the other person has done if, you, if you're not careful. Uh, and I think that goes to also um, possibly setting up the folders in a manner where you're doing maybe just a one-way push or a one-way pull instead of bi-directional. So um, bi-directional is tricky. I would say make sure you, you, you're putting them into certain states so that they are uh, controlled a little bit better. Um, uh, I think that would be your best answer for that. Yeah, I figured that you know using things like lifecycle states would probably be the best case scenario um, for things like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, in regards to uh, to filtering by things like lifecycle states and the properties, um, I know you were referring there to the file lifecycle state. Is there a way to, I don't think there's a way to reference the item lifecycle state um, through there, I'm assuming. I'm just thinking it doesn't work that way backwards. That's correct. These are all based on file, file mm -hmm. states. All right. Um, Quick question. Were there any performance slash functional improvements made for SolidWorks files um, with Vault Pro in 2019? Uh, this customer is currently on 2017 Vault Pro and they experience a lot of performance issues and sometimes functionality problems. Um, I will say this, that we have delayed the uh, release of the SolidWorks add-in for 2019 uh, specifically so that we could investigate the performance issues that, that were, were noticed between 17 and 2018. Um, and so therefore, we're, we're going to hold off on releasing that one until we can address those, address, uh, hopefully address those performance problems that, we've, that have been not only told to us, but we've been noticing ourselves. Cool, awesome, good to know. Um, and then last question before we move on here. Um, when you do a send link to a, uh, a folder within Vault thing from things like emails and stuff, um, is there a way to prevent it from opening another instance? If you have one open already. Um, unfor yeah, unfortunately, not at this moment. Um, there are a couple of instances where we, or a couple of scenarios where we will open up a new uh, Vault instance. Uh, this is one of those. Um, so unfortunately, we have not tackled that particular request yet. Cool. If that's something um, that multiple people want to see, definitely put it in the. Uh, the Vault Ideas page, and uh, if it gets a lot of visibility, then I, it'll probably go higher on their list. So uh, make sure if there's an enhancement that you want uh, Irvin and his team to to look into, you, you make it known. So absolutely cool. I think that's it for these questions. Let's go ahead and keep moving. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about some enhancements for the administrator. 
So in 2018, we actually introduced uh, three new roles. It was a project administrator, a security administrator, and a configuration administrator. Um, while these solved some uh, um, requests uh, intermittently for some, some uh, companies, it did not solve the overall one, especially for our larger customers. So our, a lot of people have asked, oh, I, I want to create custom roles. I want these roles to consist of specific permissions that we don't do out of the box, or we may give a role out of the box too many permissions, uh, and we want to tailor them back. So what we've done in 2019 is we've given you the ability to create your own custom roles. Now, you will see in the roles management uh, dialog, you'll see Roles that come out of the box, as you know, as of today, and we call those system roles. Those are uh, consider them being the same as system properties, um, properties that we or roles that we come out of the box with. You cannot modify these roles. You cannot delete these roles. You can't deactivate the roles. I mean, if you don't want to use the role, you don't assign a user to that role. Um, but they will be roles that will all, always be there um, from this point forward. However, what you can do is you can copy one of these existing roles so you should have a starting point. For instance, if you had, uh, as, as you can see here, we're showing you a, a custom objects uh, role where we've copied the custom object consumer role to as a starting point, and now I can modify that role uh, by adding or subtracting permissions that were already in there. You can do that with any of the roles as a starting point and start removing permissions or adding the permission, the one permission that, or you know, the however many permissions that you think it needs for your new custom role. Give it a name, give it a description, uh, you hit okay, and then you have a new role that you can assign users to. The management role dialog also comes with a usage count uh, column so that you can know how many either users or groups are assigned to that particular role before you might decide to delete that role. So it becomes a, a, a user-defined role, just like a user-defined property. It's a role now that you can edit it at any time. You can delete the role if it's no longer necessary, or maybe you created it by accident, et cetera, et cetera. We did not add any new permissions. So the only, only thing that we've done here was add the ability to create custom roles with existing vault permissions that were already in the product. Um, later on, we might consider adding new permissions and, and giving a little bit more granular um, ability in those permissions, um, such as maybe breaking up a permission that currently exists into multiple permissions, <clears throat> as, I, as actually an idea was posted today on just, just that. They wanted a different way of creating users, um, so we, they wanted to add a few more permissions. So keep that in mind when you're in this, uh, when you're trying to do this. Uh, the other thing that's in here is the search dialog, as you can see next to the assigned permissions in this dialog. When you start typing, uh, for instance, if you were to type the word file, it will filter the, the uh, available permissions and the selected permissions on any of the permissions that contain the word file. That way you can narrow it down to a group of permissions um, that you're looking for or looking to manage so you don't see this long list uh, of uh, permissions that are in the system. Keep in mind that some permissions may not be obvious that it needs another permission in order for you to use it. Um, for instance, um, a, a, um, if you wanted to move a file, an actual move of a file is not only an add permission, but it's also a delete permission. Uh, so you might need to be able to delete uh, or file delete permission uh, to do some of the other things that you can't or you want the, the user to do in this particular role. The nice thing here is that you find out um, that the user can't do something that you, you weren't aware of. You can always go back into the role, add the, the missing permission. Uh, the user has to log out and log back in for the change to take effect, uh, but then at least you can narrow down to the minimum permissions that you need for that particular role. For those of you that use reports, we have updated the report um, format to the newest Microsoft Report Viewer uh, 2015 runtimes. Um, you can also then now use the latest versions of Microsoft Visual Studio to edit these templates because uh, obviously you cannot find Visual Studio 2008, which was the old version, any longer uh, on the Internet. So you can use the newer versions of Visual Studio to modify the templates and, and uh, update them as necessary. Auto loader, um, if, if you're, if, especially for those who are new to Vault, um, but if you're existing um, users to Vault and you're still 
importing legacy files that were outside of Vault. At one point in time, Autoloader, you can only be an administrator to use Autoloader. We've changed that in 2019 so that a user with the, uh, I think it's document editor level two permissions now can actually use the Autoloader um, program. You don't need to be an administrator to use Autoloader. We've done some other enhancements. As you can see here, we've added this where use tab so that you can select a particular file and see where it's used in the selection of the, uh, of the files that are in Autoloader. We've added a filter list, um, which is a, you know, a static list to easily find out um, you know, files that are in a failure state. So you do that on a particular column uh, and you select the filter and, and uh, the status and therefore you can find particular files. We've also added a upload uh, indicator for the number of files that are not only have been already uploaded, but uh, the files remaining to be uploaded. Uh, so that's after you, in this case, what you're seeing in this, in this current dialogue, after you've completed the scanning, you go to the next step. Once you hit upload, we'll show you a, an indicator of how many have uploaded and uh, how many files are uploaded and how many are left to be uploaded. And again, we, we've added the, the ability to, um, by default, the document editor level two role is the role that can uh, use the auto loader or you have permissions such as the folder create, folder delete, folder read, um, file create, file read, and a few others. That if you had a custom role, those are the roles that are needed to use auto loader. And then this is last but not least, um, a lot of the times for those who are familiar with data standards, if you're not familiar with data standards, I highly recommend that you um, talk to Nigel and Nat, Nigel and his team about data standards and, and see how you can take advantage of it. Uh, previous releases, we would always release data standards separately. Uh, it was a separate download on various different locations, but now we've included data standards within the installer of Vault Professional um, so that you have it immediately uh, and, and you can use it uh, instead of waiting for it or downloading it from a different uh, location. So it's immediately available to you today. So with that, actually, Nigel, that is the last slide. Um, I will say this, um, this, 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 I'll talk to this slide real quick. Um, I think it's, it's really uh, important for you to get familiar with if you're not already familiar with our community online. Uh, we do have a feedback community for uh, questions that you, uh, our, our public forum, which we always talk uh, and answer questions on. You'll see I'm up there a lot of the times asking or answering questions that customers put in yourselves. Um, we have a Vault Beta community, which is beta.autodesk.com. Um, uh, actually, I should provide a different link. This is an old link, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're not uh, familiar with that, uh, I can make sure Nigel has a, a correct link and send it out to everyone. If you haven't signed up, I highly recommend you sign up for the beta form. And, and the reason why is that for those who are currently using Vault Professional Vault Workgroup and you use, for instance, the copy design utility, we are looking at enhancing that utility uh, and we want a lot of feedback before we make our own decisions of what we need to change to make that easier for you to use. So we're, we're having conversations in the community about this, the, the feedback or the beta community about this. And we'll have other uh, conversations, webinars, uh, alpha software, where you can be the voice um, that you are and drive these the changes to the features that are, are necessary for you to do your work more efficiently uh, and not get bogged down with maybe some bad decisions we have made in a particular feature. So jump into that community. Um, watch some of the webinars if you haven't had the ability uh, to join the live webinar and then give us your feedback in the in the beta community and again last but not least here is the vault ideas page um, we do look at the ideas uh, I, I know that some have have stated that we don't implement ideas as fast as the inventor team implements ideas yes that is the case um, uh, but we do implement them uh, as as we see that we can uh, and as well as the ones that are very important to you, the users, the ones that are highly voted. Uh, keep in mind um, a couple things that I'd like for everyone to keep in mind when you create an idea. Please express the problem that you want us to solve. Um, don't just try and stay away from telling us how to solve the problem. Um, because if you tell us how to solve the problem, we actually may not solve the problem. Uh, if you tell us how to solve it, 
we may not actually address the problem that you are actually having. Um, so try and explain what the problem actually is. You can give us an idea of how to solve it, um, but really express what the problem is that we're trying that you're trying to solve or you want us to solve. Uh, and again, we will either ask for feedback. Um, you'll see it out. I'll question uh, some of the uh, ideas for clarity, uh, and, and then you know we'll put it in the list or we'll respond on the idea on where we're going to go with it. So with that, let's jump into the last section of question answer. Awesome. There's a lot of questions. I just want to reiterate a couple of things before. I know at the beginning of this webcast, I talked a little bit about um, a support offering from Kativ. Just want to give you guys a 30 second um, lowdown on that. I know a lot of people, about 20% of the people who answer that that uh, that poll have no vault. Um, and the reasons for that being, I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of reasons why, why a lot of people haven't adopted the tool. Um, but we want to make sure that make it as easy as possible for everyone to be able to do so. Um, so definitely reach out to me if, uh, if this sounds interesting. Um, we've created a new support offering. Um, it's kind of a vault care, kind of a Kativ care kind of deal, um, where uh, we'll do all of your vault maintenance for you. Um, and then for those of you who don't even have a vault yet, um, we'll do the implementation for you. And that's really big. Um, and the pricing for that starts at uh, just, I think it's just under five grand. I think it's $49.95 is where the pricing starts for that. Um, I know a lot of people have that stigma that vault's super complicated and it's kind of expensive. Uh, and it just creates headaches. Um, we're trying to alleviate that stigma for everybody. We're making it as easy as possible. Um, but definitely let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. I know a lot of people want to be able to uh, get through that initial hurdle um, to get into Vault in the first place. So that's one. Um, let's go ahead and jump into a couple of questions here while we're at it. And um, just uh, I know we mentioned a little bit about data standards and the data standard download, Irvin. If you can give us the lowdown on data standards um, in two to three sentences um, as to what it does, what it's capable of, um, that I think that'll answer like three or four of these questions. <laughs> OK. Uh, two to three sentences. That's, that might be hard, but uh, I'll try. Let's see, let's see what we can do. Data standards is a, an extension to Vault where you can customize it to make sure all of your designers are following the same process and practices when they're checking in and out files. Um, it has an extension into Inventor and AutoCAD as an example. And what happens um, and why it's really good to use is say for instance, you have uh, requirements that a particular um, um, inventor part uh, it has to have properties that are filled in before it can be checked into Vault. It, maybe it has to have a maybe it has to use a particular numbering scheme, and it'll be assigned to a specific category. Um, these things can all happen prior to the file ever being checked into Vault by using data standards. Because once you hit check in inside of Inventor, it will it will come up with this data standards dialog. It will force the designer to fill in the I properties and, and select, for instance, the correct uh, numbering scheme or however you program uh, the, the uh, data standards window to, to act. Uh, and then before the, the, the designer has to, to meet those requirements before they can check in the file. So that's really what, uh, in a nutshell, what data standards is. There you go. Close enough. I think that was four or five sentences, but uh, <laughs> hopefully that answered the question for everybody. Yeah, a lot of people are like, hey, what does it do? Um, so right. uh, let's uh, let's get to a couple more. Irvin, there's a lot of people in here giving you kudos for a great session. So just wanted to, to give you the, uh, the thumbs up, I guess the virtual thumbs up from everybody um, for, for today's session. Let's see here. Um, this is a question that I know is going to be coming up in every What's New webcast I have in the next two weeks, right? So next week's Inventor, the week after that's AutoCAD, is do I see this in my uh, my account portal or my desktop app yet? Um, so right now, I, I think I can tackle this one. Uh, was right now, they're, for they're fulfilling um, customers' software packages for 2019. So you might see stuff, you might not see stuff yet, but uh, over the next couple of weeks, you'll see things get added. Um, I know things like suites and collections are going to get updated in a couple of weeks. Um, so I know that I personally, in my account, um, see Vault 2019, but not Inventor 2019 yet. I'm sure it'll change in the next couple of days here. 
Uh, just giving everyone a heads up. If you don't see this yet, it's you're not like alone, I guess. Um, Irvin, do you have an idea of uh, when everything's going to start, or when everything's planned to appear in everyone's accounts? Um, like you, like you stated, it should it, it should be all finished within the next couple of weeks. Awesome, cool. So um, hopefully that answers those questions for people um, who are you know looking forward to move on to that newest version. Let's see here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. Um, everyone is, there's multiple people thanking you guys for adding the custom roles. Um, specifically, Brian Kelly here, who added a lot of exclamation points to his uh, his thank you, for sure. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. I'm trying to see which questions I skipped from the beginning, um, because there were so many of them. Um, for Project Sync, do all of the collaborators need a Fusion Team subscription? How does that work in regards to licensing? Ah, uh, that's a, that's a very good question. The so the the owner of the Fusion Team um, site can invite anyone into that Fusion Team site. Um, I don't know the specifics, but there there's a certain level of of uh, an invite that they can have. So the so the quick answer to that is no, not everyone needs their own Fusion Team uh, um, uh, account. Nice. They yep. just need an audit SID and then be invited to the Fusion Team that's already open. Yep, and then if you want to do like advanced things within that Fusion Team site, you might need an account. Um, if you have any questions on whether or not what tiers, levels, all that stuff that you need, uh, need licenses for and things like that, let me know. Um, I'd like to consider myself probably one of the more well-versed people on our team um, in regards to Fusion team and it, coincidentally BIM 360 team as well. So uh, let me know. I've got all of the details for all of that stuff based on what you want to do. Uh, let's see here. Do do do. I think that's just about everything. Just uh, this last question here. Um, Irvin, in regards to uh, all of the stuff you showed today, um, I noticed personally that most of it is, or a lot of it, the added functionality and features are work group and professional upgrades. Um, can you go over really fast, as fast as possible, um, what things that Vault Basic users would see um, an improvement on if you want to kind of go back into the presentation or not back into the presentation, but think back to the presentation. Um, so real quickly, there actually hasn't been any uh, enhancements to to Vault Basic. Um, there are some underlying enhancements when we do performance issues. You see, you know, those aren't very uh, apparent. Uh, we do them on the back end on the server side, um, but as far as functionality. Um, only fixes have been done to Vault Basic, but n no new enhancements to Vault Basic. Cool. I I think Vault Basic works as Vault Basic is intended to be. Um, I'm a big fan. So, all right. And then last question before we get going. Uh, I promise. Um, are there any changes to the ADMS itself, or is it all pretty much the same interface? Um, the ADMS interface is pretty much the same. We haven't done anything there. Um, uh, nothing functionality wise, but that uh, goes to my previous statement of we'll do a lot of, we do uh, a lot of back end performance improvements, but you just won't notice them uh, in the interface. Right, they won't be visible, but there are things that are happening in the back there. So awesome. Um, I think that's it. I'll give everyone about 15 more seconds to answer any more, uh, ask any more questions. Um, next week, uh, we will be going over Inventor 2019 with Lauren, one of uh, one of Irvin's colleagues over there and the uh, product management team for Vault and Inventor. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that one. Um, like Irvin mentioned, if you have any ideas to implement into next versions of uh, Vault, maybe even a dot release, go ahead and post them into the ideas station. Uh, I'll make sure everyone gets a link to that. Um, after all of the What's News, I'll probably send a uh, compilation email with everything, um, all the information that you guys need. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you all next week. Thank you, Irvin, for being here today and being here on you know the last couple of Vault updates uh, webcasts too. Yeah, no problem, my pleasure. Um, let's take Mark's last question. I think it's, it, it is probably an important question for those who are. Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, who, who uh, are, are currently on Vault. And the question is, any upgrades required to SQL 
or Windows Server. Um, it depends on the SQL that you're coming from. We did drop support for, I believe, SQL 2012, so you'll, you'll probably have to upgrade your SQL Server. And the same thing with Windows, it really depends on where you're coming from. I actually don't believe that we've dropped any Windows uh, versions would probably just add it support it for the latest service pack. So uh, I exactly. think that would yeah, answer that question. Definitely. <laughs> thank you all for being here today. And uh, Irvin, thanks. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye.